President Obama actually withheld more information, spent 36 odd something million dollars under the Freedom of Information Act to withhold information from journalists. How did we he get used to Obama? The, well, hold Excuse on, this is why it matters. Because no, no. Donald Trump it has not, not done that. Matter. Donald Trump has not it done that. It does not matter. We are not going to Obama to compare Obama Is Obama to, fascist? I don't know. Okay, time for the latest installment of Change My Mind. Unedited conversations with real people about controversial topics. As per usual, comment the topics you'd most like to see for future installments below. This week, we made a special trip to Washington, D.C. and parked outside of the White House itself to deal with one of the most pervasive myths in the left's social nomenclature today. I'm not saying that Donald Trump is a fascist. Humanity yeah. is facing an emergency. A fascist regime has seized the reins of power in the most powerful, actually the sole superpower in the world. There's a word for this. Ashley, it's fascism. I mean, I think that uh, Donald Trump himself is a dangerous neo-fascist in the main. Oh. A flirtation with fascism in this country. Now this government, uh, hand in hand with another fascist, Trump. I disagree. Do you? Feel free to comment and substantiate your argument below, but we decided to put all of this to the test. Unfortunately, turns out most people visiting the White House actually really like President Donald Trump. I like him. Something you do, we love Trump. We love you. I love you. I love you. Thank you very much. So much so, in fact, that it was hard to get a whole lot of people willing to sit and have a civil disagreement at all. Though we did get uh, quite a few, as per the usual, drive-by yellings. No, he's a moron. He's a fascist. He's a Nazi. He's a bastard. He's a cheater. I presume that somebody made a bribe. You can go on YouTube and search and you will okay. find so many things that comes out from his mouth. Fire the liar. Yeah. Fire the liar. But we finally sat down with a couple of people to have hopefully a productive discussion about Donald Trump, fascism, and accusations therein. As always, before you engage in civil disagreement, it's important to define your words. Well, what's the definition of a fascist? I'm glad you've asked. Let's agree to start with a definite. You want to read that for me? That's from Miriam Webster. Da, 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 da. Political philosophy, movement, or regime that exalts nation. Wow. And often raised above the individual and stands for the centralized. Reading that, uh, I would say no, because I don't think he exalts the nation at all. Okay. Well, hold on, continue. It's centralized. Okay. Centralized autocratic government headed by a dictatorial leader. Well, mm -hmm. I do think he's dictatorial. Okay. Severe economic and social regimentation. No. Forcible suppression of op opposition, yes. Okay. So there you go. You just made a few assertions there based on the definition of fascism, but we agree in the definition of fascism. I'm defining it okay. as for the dictionary. Where did that come from, anyway? Mer Merriam-Webster. Okay, all right. Yeah. You know, so I'm trying to be as unbiased as I can here. So where would you say uh, he's a fascist, Donald Trump? I would say that opposition, that... Uh, the suppression of opposition. Right, the suppression of opposition. Okay, how so? Well, let's see, we just had the man's uh, security clearance removed simply because he has vocally dis disagreed with President which, Trump. Which man are we talking about? Um, the ex-general, or he was a military man. Okay. Or he, no, no, actually, I think he'd been the CIA director under Obama. Okay. And he's threatening to re remove other people's um, security clearances as well. Okay. He also says um, the press is the enemy of the people. Okay. Okay. And then, okay, so can we, can we take a couple of those now? Because you just sure. issued two. Okay. So a couple of things. For example, um, uh, probably the most uh, severe example is he fired Comey, right? That was a big one. Okay. Fired James Comey. So we're talking about the investigation. I know we often go to the Russia probe or who he's granted security clearances to or removed. Let me ask you this. Is it within his constitutional authority to do that? Yes. Okay. So that wouldn't be an example of fascism. No. Your problem isn't with Donald Trump. Your problem is with the United States law. Uh, then you talk about, uh, he's, he said, I want to make sure I have your quote correct, that the press is the enemy of the people. Is that what you said? I think it said oppresses in that definition. Yes, but, you, but that was a quote that you used, right? He's, that Donald Trump has said the press is the enemy of... Yes, he says the press is the enemy of the people. Okay. Do you know where that quote actually comes from? No, I don't. Stalin. Yeah, Donald Trump didn't say that. He right. talked about fake news but being the enemy of the public. But is he not saying that right now himself? No, he's talking about fake news is a quote that he's used, which was a leftist term. I'm sure you know. It was invented by liberals, which he then co-opted, being an enemy of people. Is he not saying himself yeah. 
that right now, currently, whoever said it first, yeah. is he not currently saying that the press is the enemy of the people? That exact quote is a quote attributed to Stalin. Has he so said I'm talking it himself? About Am I misinformed? Has he yes. not said yes, it himself? Yes, you are. But yes. And let's move on to... I'm misinformed? Yes. yes. I've not seen his tweets that say the press is the enemy of the people. No, or, you, or his television He's talking about fake news, his, yeah. But l let's move on again to, there's rhetoric, I think is important, and there's policy. So you've talked about the press, for example, and I think that's important. I think freedom of the press is very important. For example, we both agree <laughs> if someone sought to nationalize the press, that would be a problem. That'd be a step toward fascism, right? Would we both agree on that? Yes. Okay, good, good. So we have some common ground there. What has Donald Trump done as far as actionable steps taken towards suppression of the free press. Well, hasn't he tried to uh, re uh, al not allow people into the White House, into the press room? He's he's trying to dictate who's allowed to come in and not come in. Uh, that's a small amount of suppression. It's not a legal huge. Uh, sure, oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Um, you know, yeah. he hasn't passed a law. He hasn't pulled out the police. He, sure. But it, just in saying that, and and in in. in so back to the rhetoric. Right, the rhetoric. So not so much policy, it sounds to me, you have a problem with the rhetoric. That's correct. Because his policies would actually fly in the face of that. Um, because you, you were the one who sat down, you believe he's a fascist. So if we talk about policy, I mean, President Obama actually withheld more information, spe spent 36 odd something million dollars under the Freedom of Information Act to withhold information from journalists. How did we he get used to Obama? The well, hold Excuse on, this is why it matters. Because no, no. Donald Trump it has not, not done that. Matter. Donald Trump has not it done that. It does not matter. We are not going to Obama to compare Obama Is Obama a fascist? I don't know. Okay. But you said with such authority that Donald Trump is a fascist. If I may just continue along with my point here. Uh, Barack Obama used the Espionage Act not only to spy on, but prosecute more leakers, whistleblowers, and journalists than any president in history. The reason I bring this up is because Donald Trump hasn't done that. As a matter of fact, he's been more transparent. He's been more open to the press than the previous president. I don't think Barack Obama was a fascist. And I don't think Donald Trump is a fascist. You are saying definitively that Donald Trump is a fascist based on rhetoric. I'm showcasing you his policy. Why would he say this then if he's so transparent and so yeah. open and so actually wanting the press in? Why I would, why would he say, he why, wants the press why does he say that? Why does he say because that? the press has an inherent liberal media bias and it's dishonest. Oh, excuse me. Why? How do you prove that? What are the numbers? Where Where are the studies that this 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 mainstream media is is, is yes. so liberal and progressive and communist and whatever you want to say? I didn't say towards that. the left that they that. have this bias. One thing, if you could do me a favor, I didn't put any words in your mouth. Don't put words in, in well, my you, mouth. You, but you changed the argument, you st which we I thought were talking about Donald Trump, we and are. you switched it over to no, Obama. I'm do you understand the purpose for that, though? Do you no, understand the purpose? No, no, no. So you, you said Donald Trump is a fascist. No, but why are we talking Obama? Why because Obama talking, actively sought to suppress the why? press, and Donald Trump doesn't. That's relevant. And how do I know he hasn't? How do I know he hasn't? Policy when I hear from his no mouth one. that he does not like the press, yes. and that they're lying, and that everything that they say is fake, with the exception of one news program. Yeah. A lot of what they say, yeah, is, is fake. It's and, unsubstantiated. And why does he also then retweet unsubstantiated claims from people. See, again, we're getting back into rhetoric. Could you point me to any... I have no other... Substantive I have no, policies. I, have, I only... I, the only information I have is what I can read and what I can see on television. Okay. And so whatever Donald Trump puts out as a tweet, that is what I know. Okay. What do you read and what do you, what do you uh, watch as far as television news? Uh, I watch Fox and I watch MSNBC. Okay, that's good. I'm glad you balance kind of two sides of the yes, coin. Yes, I do. And that's very that's very respectable. Um, and I actually appreciate that. I think it's more valuable than watching CNN that kind of plays down the middle when they obviously lean left. Um, and what do you read? Why do you know CNN obviously leans left? <laughs> well, if you look up, look, do you want to take Jake Tapper's example? Do you want to take uh, a multitude of their reporters? Do you want to take a multitude of people who actually work at CNN who have direct ties to the Hillary Clinton campaign? But I don't want to get off on the beaten path here. I brought that up because you definitively said Donald Trump is a fascist, right? I'm not mistaken. That was your assertion. Well, I said that looking at that definition, I think parts of it met Donald Trump, but okay. not all of it. Okay. So he has not made laws, or he can't make laws, but he has not done things. He's not pulled up the army or he could, whatever though. forces he could. He could make laws to suppress people or oppress people. He he has not done that. He right. has actually, because we don't have these laws, we've been working, I think, under the assumption that some behaviors. They were just, they were customs, they were customary. This mm -hmm. is the way people customarily uh, did things, uh, customarily uh, presidential candidates uh, 
showed us their tax returns. Mm -hmm. So no, Donald Trump hasn't broken any laws in not showing us his tax return. He okay. simply has broken custom. What does any of this have to do with Donald Trump being a fascist? Nothing. Okay. I think I was getting to a point of there, there are points in that where I that with that definition that I think he pulls into fascism, but not all of it. So, so you believe Donald Trump's tax returns, as it relates to him being a fascist, are more relevant than previous presidents and their suppression of the press? No, I, I was using his tax returns as an, as as a, an example. As an example that, That's that, why that I was using Barack Obama right, and his treatment right, of the press. Right. So I'm okay with using the tax returns. I disagree that that would make him a fascist. No, um, I didn't say that would make him no, a fascist. No, I understand. And okay. I also didn't say that it would make Barack Obama a fascist. I'm just, I am just was pointing out the act of suppression and prosecution of journalists, which was unprecedented under President Obama. Same thing we're talking about. You, know, you just mentioned that he can't make this into law. Well, unfortunately, because of executive orders now in precedent, there are a lot of executive orders that have made law. You know, most uh, egregiously would be DACA or Title IX that we saw from uh, the previous administration. Whereas executive actions are simply meant to actually uh, guide current laws and how they are interpreted. Uh, so he could. So a good example of fascism would be someone who would sign an executive order that would actively suppress the press. Uh, he hasn't done that. An executive order, you know, uh, uh, somehow uh, 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 using the Second Amendment or changing it thereof for a free citizenry to be an armed populace, or signing an executive order, for example, that might silence freedom of speech through roundabout ways. He hasn't done any of those things. You know, he has actually rolled back regulations, rolled back taxes, rolled back red tape. He's been less invasive into your life. So I just don't see how less the invasive into my life. Yes. Uh, and he can break laws and get away with it. That's unfortunately been the case with, you, he look where has, you are, everyone I, here I, is breaking laws. If you were to, if you were to pass we all, out how tickets. How are we all breaking laws here? I'm talking about Washington, D.C. There are no I, don't, I don't live in D.C. I'm not, I'm not from Washington, okay. D.C. So he can, what laws would you say he's broken, gotten away with? Uh, the immigration. Okay. The problem at the border. Okay. That when people cross the border and try to apply for, what are these, the people who are uh, saying that they are being uh, oppressed or... or have trouble in their home countries. Yeah, or refugees. To, asylum, but refugees, yeah. right. And so he says, he, he is saying there are no refugees. These mm -hmm. are simply all illegal immigrants. Yes. And as they step foot across the border, they are now criminals. Yes. So is he not breaking, is that a law or is that simply a custom the United Nations who somebody put out and said you have to take refugees in? Is he not breaking laws? No, he's not. As a matter of fact, that is United States law. Your problem would be with existing United States law if you cross the border so and enter he, this country well, illegally. Excuse me, I'm not down there saying you can't come across. No, there it, should be someone. Yeah. But yeah. No, I'm saying I'm personally not down there saying these people are right. not allowed to come across, but somehow someone should be. President Trump has his group of people down there saying they're not allowed to come across. Right. Okay, they're, they're not allowed to cross. How is that fascism? I'm saying, well, he's breaking laws. No, he's not. He's enforcing the United States immigration law. You can't well, cross into this no, country illegally. No, no, no. You're talking immigration law versus the problem of the refugees who are coming here and saying, I, I would like to apply for refugee status. I would like to prove that I've been... Sure. And, and they just, they're not giving their day at court. They've had, I think there was something, report of a woman who was her day that she was supposed to actually be in court was mm -hmm. on a plane being sent back to yeah. Venezuela or Guatemala or wherever and the judge says get her back here. Can I ask you a question? Sure. I, I want to make because we, like we just and I appreciate you taking the time and I appreciate you being civil. Um, I think we're, we're, we're maybe missing each other here. Can you explain to me someone crosses the let's say Mexican-American border right? Mm -hmm. uh, does so without any verification just does so in the heat of the night. Mm -hmm. Illegal immigrant. Right. What is the difference between somebody who does that and somebody who does it and seeks refugee status? What's the difference between an illegal immigrant and an undocumented refugee who comes here illegally? I think if there were people who were sitting at the border trying to, to walk into, from what I understood, that there were, there were sort of government uh, spots where they could walk in there and say, I'm here as a refugee, please allow me in, those places were closed down. How do you make it impossible for them not to obey the law and then arrest them and say you disobey the law? What, what law is he disobeying by not allowing illegal immigrants to Sir, I tell you, I'm not sure if it's United States law, if this is it's NATO, not. if this is, and we passed, not. The, we, we signed treaties with people saying we are going to treat refugees yeah. in this certain way. It's not. What's not? It's not. You said you don't what know if it's it a law. Then? It's not what a law. What is it then? So well, because wait, what you brought what is, up. Who, who, who protects the refugees? Who's, who gave us this? That, you know, a refugee comes in and says, please let me in. 
I, I understand for I understand where you're coming from a place of compassion, right? These people. No, are coming. please don't go there. Please don't go there. We're trying to say that. Uh, to me, a fascist is a person who. I'm not coming from compassion. I'm coming from the, the position that of. That wasn't an insult. It's, I'm, I'm coming. I understand that because I'm compassionate toward these people. But rule of law does matter. Your problem is not with uh, the United States president. No, it's, it's with, with President United, Trump. It's with the United no, States. No, it's with President it's Trump, with Trump who is breaking laws. the law and not allowing these people to come in. No, he's not. He's not breaking the law. I think that's important. Again, there's nothing fascist about having borders. Again, if we go back to fascism, we're talking about autocratic control of government or a racial ethno-nationalist state. There's nothing fascist about actually enforcing current immigration law. With what current immigration laws? You, I don't even know what they are. Does anyone know what they are? Yes. What are they? You're not allowed to come to this country illegally, and you should be deported if you what do. What about the refugees? I said I'm not talking about if the immigrants. Enter illegally, I'm talking if they about enter illegally, the they're to be deported. They're and illegal if immigrants. They are absolutely an, in prevented from doing it legally, mm -hmm. then what is that? That is enforcing immigration laws. That you, is not enforcing Do you believe that it's a right laws. that anyone who wants to come here should be able to be, be granted uh, citizenship? No. Okay. So what's the problem with vetting the people who are coming here illegally is, or sending no, them back? You are trying to twist this around. You are not addressing the refugees. You're not addressing the fact that people are coming here from Venezuela or Guatemala or whatever South American countries they're trying to come in. Sure. Saying that I cannot stay there. Yeah. We will Irrelevant. be killed. Oh, you have such compassion, but it, it's, it's irrelevant. irrelevant to the law. It is irrelevant to the law. Yes, it's, but it's very compassionate of you to say that it's too bad. That well, you just you said you don't know killed. what the law is, and then I've informed now you to what the law is, and then you said Donald Trump is a fascist. So I want to make sure that I understand this. Sir, you believe Donald Trump is a fascist what, because he's enforcing I immigration law. I love the law. pressured speech. Do you believe Donald Trump is a fascist because he enforces immigration speech. law? You guys can just twirl stuff around and I'm not trying to pressure around. stuff around and, and say all you want, pretend to be compassionate, and you're not. Can I say one last, thing? I, one last thing? Can we discuss Goodbye. one last it's thing? It's very hot. I know it's very hot. Let me, let me see if we can find common ground on, on, on this. I doubt it. You doubt it? I doubt it. I think you might, I think you might be surprised. I doubt okay. it. I actually have a real problem with fascism. And I would be the first, I would be locking arms with you against fascism. If, for example, and I would the like, man, if, for example, the man who probably did the most can I, can I to speak? fight and for American rights Maybe. and laws, Mr. McCain, Senator McCain, and mm. the disrespect he showed that man. Mm. Excuse me. Oh. Goodbye. Okay. Well, you didn't allow me to speak, but that's pretty disrespectful, I would say, yourself. Thank you. Turns out respect is a one-way street. By the way, before the next interview, this is a good time to let you know to hit the notification bell, because subscriptions don't mean anything anymore, or join Mug Club at ladderwithcrowder.com slash mug club for the full one-hour daily show. Not only do you get the show every day, as opposed to just the clips, along with this wondrous hand-etched, hand-painted mug, but most of these change my minds and similar videos get demonetized the moment they're uploaded, so Mug Club is the only way to support it. $69 per year for students, veterans, or active military. Try it for a whole week before you join. Okay, let's talk to this next guy. Alexi? Yes. Nice to meet you. Could you scoot in a little closer so we can get you on the... Sorry, I know, I know it's hot, so... No, don't worry about it. Don't make me remind you about the scooching. <laughs> All right, good. So, Alexi. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how much you know. You just watched someone else sit down and speak. Yeah. Uh, let me just kind of reassert this. Sorry, I'm getting... I think I'm getting heat stroke. I have to burp. Is that okay for you? Go for it. <laughs> no, it might just be throw up later on. Um, you know, this is uh, unedited, so whatever we talk about is, is, is going to be genuine. People will see entirely what, what is discussed, not taken out of context. We're not doing the sound bites. We're not pushing for gotchas. Hopefully productive discussion rationalizing our positions. Um, you know, you've seen a lot in the media, particularly in the progressive left. They label Donald Trump a fascist, accuse him of fascism. I just don't agree at all. If you think I'm wrong, you're welcome to change my mind. Well. What is what is fascism? What are they labeling him as? Yes. Well, I think it's important to go to the definition. We have it here from Merriam-Webster. If, if you could read that, it'd be appreciated. Yeah, I, I know what it is, but people, could you read that out loud? Yeah, so we've so got it. The a whole political thing. philosophy, movement, or reg regime uh, that exalts nation and often race above the individual. That stands for a centralized autocratic government headed by a dictatorial leader. It's a hard word. I get that one. Dictatorial yeah. and like dictatorial. Yeah. yeah. Don't worry about it. Uh, severe economic and social uh, regimentation and forcible suppression of opposition. Okay. Or a tendency towards or actual exercise of strong autocratic or dictatorial. Control. Yeah. This is the capitalized version, kind of the ism, and that's. But yeah. So do we agree on that? That's the definition of fascism. Yeah. From okay. So, I don't think Donald Trump is one. Do you mind if I keep that open? Yeah. Sure. Thanks. Yeah. So. Um, so, so something that I feel is key here is the idea of nationalism. Okay. Because, you know, 
It's kind of interesting because we just had a um, Senator McCain just passed away. Yeah. Um, obviously, to a degree, a, a nationalist, somebody who, not to a, a severe degree, but somebody who, who, who feels strongly that they represent this country in a, in a very noble way, and I think does. Somebody then, who believes that this is a great nation and looks out for yeah, its interests exactly. primarily. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we okay. So then we agree on that term right there. You're talking about nationalism. Okay. But there's there's a degree of nationalism that I think is very is frankly dangerous. Okay. Yeah. There's a degree of nationalism that um, puts yourself above other people. Sure. That because I think I think fascist. Um, I think I, th I really think nationalism is the is is where people have a problem and they label it as fascism because okay. I mean you, you see it from the start make America great again mm -hmm. and now I, I personally I really don't know when it comes to there's so much going on in the government that I have my personal opinion fluctuates like by the minute sure. I don't really know what's going on well, I appreciate that means that you're you're flexible yeah which is not a bad thing right but um, I mean Donald Trump is a racist. Okay. The, personally, the okay. man himself. What makes you say that? Well, because he's he's allegedly used the term. He's you've what, seen what term? The N word. He's okay. allegedly used it. This has come out. Although the the whole issue with that is with with um, that woman is is something else. Yeah. That, that's a that's an interesting issue. You've ne you've never used the N word? No. No. I've never, never, I mean, never sung along to Kanye's college dropout and let one fly out your window? <laughs> no, I, have. I haven't. Yeah. yeah, I don't really listen to hip-hop music anymore. Oh, really? But. Well, if you do, it's kind of hard to avoid, otherwise you can't do the sing-along. It is. You can't yeah. follow the bouncing ball. Right, that's different. But, but that's alleged. So right. I don't that's, want, so that's this is conjecture, but you just said he's a racist. You see he, he is a racist. You okay. see the way his, um, there was, there's, uh, the way he treats his employees and his personal businesses. Okay. So people of Hispanic descent, mm -hmm. people who... It, it has, I don't know, I don't have the facts with me, mm -hmm. but it has come out and it is factually correct that he's treated these people poorly. He him, not he himself, his business. Yep. The, way, the, way he, the, way he, the way he uses these people for his business and then kind of doesn't... Um, well, can I, can I address this? Because I know yeah. you're, I, you're speaking a little bit in paragraphs and I, I appreciate it, but yeah. I do want to... Yeah, so you, you said definitively that he's a racist, but yes. then you just said... He didn't treat people badly. His business may have treated people badly who happen to be Latino. Right. To His, understand for the burden of proof, for you to, first off, label Donald Trump a fascist, which hopefully we'll get into, uh, but a racist, the burden of proof is on you to prove that he personally is a racist and sees people as inferior because of their race. So we have examples of him personally appointing people like Ben Carson, personally right. working with people of Latino descent. You've brought up that his business has allegedly mistreated people who are Latino. Yeah. yeah. And you still don't draw the connection that that's because Donald Trump has sent orders top down because of their race. I don't think so. It is important with that label. Right. You have some substantial proof. Otherwise, but, I could just label you a racist or a rapist with no proof. And I say, right. well, there's some evidence out there somewhere. It's you, you need to really right now. I want to hold your feet to the fire. If you say he's a racist, I really would like for you to prove to me why Donald Trump is a racist because I. All, all my criticisms of him, for example, the tariffs right now, not a big fan. His rhetoric, not a big fan. During the primaries, his attacks, not a big fan. Yeah. But him being a racist is not even on my radar. So, so the, the, okay, so I don't have definitive proof that he's a racist, okay. but it is. Well, let's throw that out then right. and move on to why else you would think he's a fascist. So it is, I don't want to it get is well known that he, he treats people poorly. Okay. He does. People. Right yeah. now, we're not talking about so, race, just so, people. So he, so he treats people who, okay. who, um, um, there was the issue with the where he he was acting in an undignified manner in a, at a rally towards a, or at a, a press conference, I think it was towards a, somebody with disabilities. He was, um, yeah. There's that. In, there was that incident. Are, was, are we talking about Donald Trump or Joe yes. Biden? <laughs> Donald Trump. Okay. Yeah. Um, Joe Biden did it too. Yeah. Yeah. I think his his was accidental. Yeah, well, I don't think Trump's was into accidental. Okay. Um, and then... Can you... Sorry, because, again, this, it's about him being a fascist. Right. And you said yes. Right. How is Donald Trump a fascist? Well, I th the reason why I think he's a... I don't... 
necessarily think he's a fascist, okay. exactly. But I think his personal disposition towards people is an indicator of where his... his um, I don't think he... I don't think it's easy for anyone to go into a position like President of the United States, especially somebody like Donald Trump, who uh, and 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 separate themselves completely. Their character, what you're talking about. They bring their character into the office. I think so. Okay. Yeah. So let me ask you this. So you're, so you're saying that you believe Donald Trump personally treats people poorly, and so you believe that personally but he treats he's people. A bad, yes. He, so, but what about his policies? that would be fascist? What would you consider amongst his policies, the actionable steps he's taken toward fascism? Now, see, now this is why I'm not sure, because I don't know, I don't necessarily think his policies okay. are fascist, but I think... And you can't call him a fascist, by definition. That's not true. I don't think so. I think because fascism is... We can go back to the definition. Right. So it's an autocra autocratic matter. government headed by a dictatorial leader. Yes. So it's severe economic and social regimentation and a forcible suppression of opposition. Yes. So his, I think his method of opposition, the way, the way, he, the way he puts down people who don't agree with him, yes. is he doesn't go after their political... Um, uh, a point of view. He goes after the person. He does do that. He does that. He goes after, and this is what people like about him. This is what is kind of not respectable, but it's kind of like refreshing a little bit in a sense. Someone who doesn't use political doublespeak. It's okay, right? But the it's it, but the the flip side of that is it's a completely invalid way of it's it's not a valid way of 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 showing somebody that they're wrong. It's going after the I, person, I, I agree not with you. going after their policy. I certainly hope that you don't see me doing that. I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't do that right. at all. And I, I don't agree with everything so, Donald and, Trump does. And I do, I do want to make it clear. And to bring I, it back I don't to, agree with to, all of his rhetoric. Right. But, again, rhetoric, calling the news some naughty names, is very different from active suppression of opposition. And the lady earlier got very mad when I brought this up. You know, if we're going to call Donald Trump a fascist, then you would have to call Barack Obama a fascist. Because, Why? Okay, so this is important as far as policy, right? Policy suppression of the media. Barack Obama spent a record 36 something million dollars uh, withholding information from journalists under the Freedom of Information Act. President Barack Obama actually used the Espionage Act not only to spy on but prosecute more whistleblowers, leakers, and outright journalists than anyone in history. There has been no one who has prosecuted, spied on, wiretapped, uh, uh, acquired identity. There was one that happened of course with Fox News under Barack Obama, uh, then Barack Obama. Donald Trump hasn't done that. Donald Trump has said some bad things. But Donald Trump has not policy-wise, or as far as action items uh, crossed off the list, done anywhere near what Barack Obama did to suppress uh, the press. And again, when you look at policies, you're talking about a guy, President Donald Trump, and my, this is just my opinion, what I see, someone who's deregulated, someone who's scaled back taxes, someone who hasn't tried to take guns away, but actively has said, I'll protect the Second Amendment, I'll protect the First Amendment, freedom of speech and the freedom of the press. We haven't seen that from anyone on the left. So I would certainly be more worried about people who stand on a platform opposing those things policy-wise than someone who says some, you know, crappy things, granted, on right. Twitter. So, and then this ties in with why I think, I don't know if he's a fascist, because I've never spoken to the, to the guy. I've never spoken to him before. I don't know, like, it's hard to know exactly what he believes. Well, that's why I think it's important to look at substantive so, policy issues. Right. Which I appreciate you've, you've right. agreed with. But I think, and I don't think I'm alone in thinking that the... The um, the way our government is organized is, if you look at it from from a from from this point of view, right? It's based on the notion of um, it, it, we're a capitalist society, right? Okay. So we we are owners. All of us are owners. That's what we do. We. I mean, it, it goes it goes all the way back to. to it's not just based on the idea of being owners. It's based on the idea of a citizen, the citizenry being free. Uh, from a, free. from a tyrannical government with inalienable right, rights being endowed free, by the creator. Being free to do what? Being free to speak, being free to practice religion, being free to engage in commerce. That's a portion of it, but that's not... I, I want to make sure that we're really clear. The government is not set up as though everyone is just an owner. That's not why it exists. Correct. Correct. I think it exists... To, so I think it exists to keep that in check. And I, I don't agree with the way this government is, is organized because okay. we... So, the government's in place to, to, to keep things You're talking like... about the government now, not Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So it's, 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 it's put in place to keep things like... Uh, it's to, to keep 
to keep people from gaining monopoly on 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 any kind of capital they feel they they have a right to to work to exercise their labor and okay. to own and to you know accumulate wealth and to live the American dream to be you know prosperous and happy and healthy. Sure. So deregulation you're talking about I think is I don't think is a good thing. I think it can lead to fascism. I think it's something that from a very basic standpoint it's something that limits people it 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 enables people to but but, but here's the thing you're you're talking about something you don't like right. and I understand that right. but that's not fascism. Right as a matter of fact what you, what you were talking about more regulation what you're talking about would be a centralized, autocratic government headed by a dictatorial leader, severe economic, and also, by the way, historically, nationalization of a lot of industries, right? Um, so that's not fascism. I just think it's important because words matter. You know, I've had people run up and say, yeah. Donald Trump's a Nazi, Donald Trump's a fascist. You may disagree with a lot of what he's done or said, but I haven't heard you disagree with a ton of what he's done, but that doesn't make somebody a fascist. And I actually see quite the opposite. Now, you see deregulation. You see, for example, supporting freedom of speech or maybe the Second Amendment. Maybe you don't see those necessarily as good things, but it is the exact opposite of what a fascist would do. The first step the fascists take is not let more people arm themselves. The first step the fascists take is not let's ensure that there's more freedom of speech on college campuses and businesses have the right to speak freely. That's not what a fascist does. Let me, because we do have to get going here. Yeah. I do appreciate you taking the time. Let me kind of, I hope we kind of leave this on some common ground. This is, I am concerned about fascism. I didn't support Donald Trump in the primaries. I didn't like his rhetoric, I would agree with you, on the media and libel laws. I thought, ooh, this is a real problem, especially as somebody who works in media. Now, thankfully, he hasn't enacted any of the, he didn't even really suggest policies. He just talked about how media shouldn't be able to libel folks. Um, but I would absolutely be concerned and stand with you arm in arm in opposing fascism if I saw Donald Trump, for example, like nationalize the media, right? That would be a problem. Nationalize industry like uh, like like healthcare, like energy, banks. Um, if I saw him actively trying to suppress the press or freedom of speech thereof, if I saw him actively trying to disarm a populace, if you added all that up, I would be very concerned about fascism. W would you as well? I would, and I just want to say one okay. last thing. So well, I just want to make sure that because if you if you do. You can't vert Bernie or Cortez or the DNC because they support all those policies. Right, and I did preface this with saying I really, this everything is, to, in my, when I look at it, it's a mess. I don't really know what's sure. going on. You can take any angle on anyone and it's, it's valid and then it's called invalid and blah, blah, blah. I disagree, but okay, I want to let you continue. So I think, I think his rhetoric is dangerous and I think his rhetoric is something that is, people, people can, how does it, People can grab onto it, right, and they can identify with it. Okay. Not necessarily know why. Sorry, I touched your leg. I didn't don't worry to, about it. I didn't mean to harass you. Not necessarily. <laughs> you no lawsuit. Don't worry about okay, it. Okay, thank you. Won't necessarily don't won't necessarily know why they're latching onto it, but it's because it feels like something I agree. to them. I agree. I understand the point with rhetoric, but right, and I think this rhetoric is ultimately a nationalist rhetoric. I okay. think he's. I think he's trying to. I mean, I was listening to the radio this morning and. Every single Trump rally is USA, but, USA. And I understand this. And I don't disagree with pride for our country, but I think blind nationalism is dangerous I and agree. can and is something that can lead to fascism. I agree. You look blind at, nationalism is a you problem. Look at, you but could we? Because we do, we do have yeah. to get one. Can yeah. We agree, we agree though that the re rhetoric, obviously, you know, to use the term problematic, can be problematic. But all the policies that I just talked about, nationalization of all commerce, industry, and active suppression of freedom of speech in the press, would certainly be a bigger problem than rhetoric. Right. Okay. But it was but we, would we agree on that? We, I agree that with that. That would be that. worse than rhetoric. And I'm not saying his rhetoric is right, because what matters is those policies yes. are proposed yes. by every top member of the DNC, the current Democratic Committee. And that's important to note. Suppression of freedom of speech, yes. nationalization of a lot of those industries. So the rhetoric bad, the alternative are people who would actually enact the policies that we've just both agreed would be worse. So Alexi, was it? Yes. Alexi, thank you so much. So much. Oh, we I found some common ground. I appreciate it. I want to say one more thing. All right, but you got to keep it brief because right. I understand. I understand. I appreciate that you're you're an intellectual. It's but his it's rhetoric that got him into the, into office. It wasn't his promise of policy of 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 you know make America great again was a blanket statement, but it was his rhetoric that got him into office. And I think I don't think we can we can say. He doesn't have complete autonomous power right now, which I think is indicative of the fact that his policies are not directly uh, reflective of, of his personal opinions that he conveys through his, his well, rhetoric. Well, he could, though. He could sign executive orders. Remember, Barack Obama said, I have, a, I have a pen and I have a phone. 
and he actually used it to create laws, right? Which is not what an executive order is meant to do. Donald Trump doesn't do that to the same degree. So he could, and he doesn't. Again, which would not, not be indicative of fascism. And I would disagree with you. I think both his rhetoric and his policies are people voted for him. And I think you're seeing right now a rip-roaring economy, a potentially 40 or 50 year record unemployment low. Um, and you're seeing people with more money in their paychecks than ever. The policies are what uh, will, will win him re-election should this continue. Seems like Alexi's mind might actually be changed on a couple of things, so hopefully we'll check back in with him in the future. By this point, a lineup had started from supporters of the show. And since you never get to see these folks uh, on these Change My Mind segments, we figured we'd let their voices of reason be heard for once. Donald Trump is not a fascist because, simply put, he hasn't nationalized industry, nor has he nationalized media. Because he hasn't confiscated people's gold, he hasn't put people in concentration camps. He has literally deregulated most of the country. He hasn't threatened to pull the FCC license of radios that broadcast editorials against him. When you look at his policies, I don't see anything that discriminates against people. The worst thing he'll do is tweet mean things at you. He will actively suppress your speech. I mean, CNN still exists, so, although nobody watches it. Barely, I was going to say. Barely. He's been slashing taxes. He's slashing tons of regulation. If he were a fascist, you'd be seeing a drastic increase of all that. The belief that he's been, you know, advocating for uh, the dissent of freedom of speech is absolutely false. Donald Trump is not a fascist because he's not doing anything to limit the freedoms that we have. Sounds to me like we have a fascist on our hands. He hasn't carlized industries, he hasn't set price controls. No actual evidence to support he's a fascist. It's just kind of a, a storyline that the liberal media is kind of pushing. The, the fascists, they took and seized everything. Right. And that's not what's going on at all. In fact, there's more freedom going on. He's literally not Hitler. Things like that. Wow, that was very substantive. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> hey there, YouTube viewer. If you like this video, click one of these other videos. Or I would usually say subscribe or hit the notification bell, but YouTube doesn't even notify you anymore. So your only option now is to sign up for The Daily Show, the full hour daily show at louderwithcrowder.com slash mug club. Join mug club and uh, help us continue the content. We're able to do it. We're able to do it relatively inexpensively with, with uh, you know, the help of Bangladeshi children. The problem we have with it, they're good at web development, but not so much with writing the jokes. Um, it, it, not an intelligence factor, but it's too much inside baseball. Cultural differences. So we can up the game if you join.